I was not planning on filming this video. Usually when you tell a story, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I feel like I am in the middle of the beginning. So I don't know how this is going to go. This is definitely a work in progress, but I just wanted to share because it might be a little bit more relatable for you if I share at this checkpoint. So I'm not going to drag this intro out too much. You know what it is. You can read the title. Just like a quick like backstory or whatever. Ever since I turned 30, I've just been on this trajectory of wanting to learn you know? And it's not even an age thing, it was just a mindset thing. Like, my previous hobbies had been so shallow, not in a bad way. I had great takeaways out of my previous hobbies. I liked watching reality TV, I liked watching YouTubers and vloggers and all that. I definitely had the capacity to take on something more mentally stimulating and was hungry for it. So I started educating myself on current events and with that, like, you want to learn more about history, American history, world history, religion. My niece and nephew, they are seven and nine and really good kids, they wanted to go on the religion part of the journey with me. What sounds better than that? So a couple weekends ago, we went to a church and when I was young, young, my family went to a Catholic church. So that's what I know, the super structured, super strict, the beautiful paint glass windows. It was just familiar and something that I wanted to get back into. I don't really talk about my personal life that much on here, but my dad, brought us to church. He's not around anymore and we don't go to church anymore. I was pretty young when my family stopped attending church. I was baptized, received first communion, I'd done my first reconciliation, um, I was not confirmed. It was before I even turned into a teenager that we stopped going to church. I guess it's embarrassing just because I'm 31 now and it's taken me this long to take it upon myself to learn it. I'm taking initiative now so I'm okay with it. It, it, it just, I am aware of like how behind I am. So anyway, I brought my niece and nephew to a Catholic church. We had a nice time, it was fine. We had donuts after. The next weekend we attended again and my mom joined this time and so we went, we attended mass. So afterwards we were in the hall and the priest came out, I had met him before. So I introduced him to my mom and then he sat down with us. He asked my mom if she was visiting or new to the area and she said no, but she's a Catholic. She'd been to Catholic church before and just stopped going. She said she had been a bad Catholic. That's what she told him. And he said, oh no, it's nice to see you back or something. So my mom said, yep, it's really nice to be back. These are my grandchildren. They're seven and nine. They haven't done communion yet. So they're very eager to partake and, you know, delve into the Catholic Catholic religion. How do we get them signed up for First Communion? They didn't have catechism classes um, at that church because he thought that all of the classes were boring, so he would just have study material that he would give to the kid to bring home, and he had mentioned a few times like the parents, working with the parents, and how the parents would learn uh, some of this material with the child, and then they, the kids and the parents would take the test. It was said enough times that I knew it was worth addressing, so I had mentioned that I'm not their parent, I'm their aunt, but I'll do the study material with them. There's nothing to say about their parents. That's my sister, so don't go there in the comments. So I just told him it would be their aunt teaching them and learning with them, and I'm eager to learn, so that would be really cool to, to see the study material. Let's get it. And he said... Mmm, yeah, well, it's really material for the parents to learn with the children in order to prepare them or something in that regard. And I was like, okay, well, you know, they're not in attendance. It's totally fine. I've cleared it with both parents for me to bring them. They're very eager to get the study material so they can partake and feel more included because they have not done First Communion. They did not go and take Eucharist. And I'm excited for them to learn about what it's all about. He just reiterated like, well, it's, it really comes from the parents. Religion is about parents. That's, that's where we're at or something like that. You can interpret it and understand that he's telling you no. My niece and nephew are at a standstill. I am not mad at the Catholic church. I understand that we went in there as bad Catholics. It was cold. He's saying it in front of them. I want nothing but positive things to come out of this journey to know God. And so that was weird. And so he just ended it by saying, this is going to be a long conversation. 
which it already had been at that point. So during mass, the priest had mentioned a few times that they were going on a youth group hike and that they need to have permission slips. Meet at the church on this day at 8 a.m. Don't drop your kids off without that permission slip. We really need permission slips. So the kids heard about the hike. They really want to go. So can we get permission slips for that hike? Maybe we shouldn't have been asking the priest, but whatever, who else was out there? I don't know. So he said, yeah, the hike is more for like older children. Um, older than them. And we're like, oh, okay, like that's understandable. And he goes, well, actually, there are some young kids there. And so I said, great, can we get the permission slips? And he said that the office was closed. <laughs> we can take a hint. You want us to go take a hike, but not the one with your church. I understand, I catch your drift. He seemed like he was very in line with the Catholic religion. I felt shame. We were trying to get these sweet children involved in church. I wish it happened just to me by myself. Like I wish the priest was talking to me about this stuff because I can handle it. Like I don't mind if people talk to me like that. It's whatever, I don't care, but like it's kids, it's, it's, first of all, it's my niece and nephew, so like that's frustrating. To put them in a situation like that was not my intention at all. Like I did not think for one second that I was potentially subjecting them to this kind of rejection and judgment and ranking. Even if I didn't know them, even if they were not my niece and nephew, you're rejecting children who are hungry for this. There's a huge decrease right now of religious people in our population. Ben Shapiro says, people have a God-shaped hole in their hearts and they're filling it with hate. That kind of stuff really spoke to me. So of course I wanted to fill that with love. I made a mistake. I can totally own up to it. Thank God. My niece and nephew did not seem phased at all. Their takeaway was not negative. It's just upsetting. I didn't mean to subject them to that. I never thought that that would be the treatment. So that's ignorance on my part and I know better now. It was so weird because the morning of when I was putting my makeup on, getting ready for church, I had a PragerU video come up on my YouTube and it was a video about Martin Luther and how he had qualms with the Catholic Church and he listed out 90 something issues that he took and he nailed it on the church. I don't know this stuff, okay? Like I will admit it. I'm not trying to act like I am aware or intelligent in this subject. I'm green as they come. With that, I mean, I'm not going to quit. That exchange had nothing to do with God. It had nothing to do with anything except for being able to better see the Catholic Church. And I'm done with it. And my niece and nephew and I can move forward from it. There are self-evident truths about all of us being created equal. So we will find something else. Um, I did find scripture. I felt sad and weird and lost. So I looked it up and I found this. So this is Mark 10, 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And also Luke 17, two, it says, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. So that's my closing sentiment for the priest and I guess just that church in general. I didn't talk about this on Sunday because I just felt like shit about it. The reason I'm saying something about it now is because yesterday, Jordan Peterson put up a video and it was called A Message to the Christian Churches. It was a very powerful message. You know, like when you feel like something speaks to you, like I, I have been so fond of Jordan Peterson. I cannot even get into how strongly he has affected my entire life to see him have a message like that. The message included so much demand from the Christian churches to be more welcoming. Invite the young men back. Say literally to those young men, you are welcome here. If no one else wants what you have to offer, we do. We want to call you to the highest purpose of your life. We want your time and energy and effort and your will and your goodwill. We want to work with you to make things better, to produce life more abundant for you and for your wife and children and for your community and your country and the world. And we have our problems in the Christian church. We are more abundant and sometimes far too often corrupt and sometimes deeply so. We are outdated, as are all institutions with their roots in the dead 
but still often wise past. So join us. We'll help fix you up, and you can help fix us up. And together, we'll aim up. Invite young men. Put up a billboard. Say, young men are welcome here. Print some flyers and put them in a box by the billboard. Signal the existence of those flyers with an arrow with the words, more information about attending here. Tell those who have never been in a church exactly what to do, how to dress, when to show up, who to contact, and most importantly, what they can do. Ask more, not less, of those you are inviting. Your churches, for God's sake, quit fighting for social justice. Quit saving the bloody planet. Attend to some souls. That's what you're supposed to do. That's your holy duty. I've commented on Jordan Peterson's YouTube before. The conversation on the comment section is thought-provoking. You can learn so much from people, even their vocabulary. It's a wonderful forum for a conversation, and the topic is always something with depth, and the people are insightful. Yesterday, I commented on that video, and I just explained the situation about the church and what happened and how it's not stopping us, but we are going to continue. I just typed it out. I felt so much better about it. You know, Jordan Peterson always says to write. I had a reply from Jordan Peterson. Elated does not begin to describe how I feel to the timing of it, the subject matter. It was not something I was expecting by any means. I'm still honestly trying to wrap my head around it. I already felt such a connection to the video itself and just I saw the comments and how it reached people at such pivotal moments of their own lives. Everybody's going through so many things and his specific video and when he chose to upload it, it affected so many people. So people were just sharing that. It just, it, it was just, it. I feel heard, I feel understood. I feel reassured. I wish for happiness to be contagious because how I feel right now, I really want you to feel the same. That's why I put up this video. I can take a fair amount of judgment, so if there's criticism in the comments, um, I'll be all right. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and uh, I will see you in my next video.